So if you saw the title of this video and thought, yeah, we're finally doing Zabaton, I'm afraid I have to disappoint you. Because we're not doing that boring lion from the north today. We're doing the way cooler lion from the north E. Apparently, adding a magic E makes everything read way better than it sounds. Like in wrath or death or hat. At least, Storm Warrior seems to like putting E's at the ends of their words. The German power metal band released one of their amazing Viking-themed albums, Heading North E, in 2008. But not all songs on it are strictly dealing with Vikings. Like Lion of the North. I'll make it quick. Lion of the North is the unofficial title of Gustavus Adolphus the Great, or Gustav Adolf II of Sweden. He was ruler of the Swedes for little more than 20 years and raised Sweden to one of the most important military powers of his time. But let's start at the beginning. Gustav Adolf was born in December 1594 in the royal castle of Tre Kronor in Stockholm. Although he was part of the Vasa dynasty, and therefore a member of the ruling family, as well as his father's oldest son, at the time of Gustav's birth it wasn't clear that he would become king later. In fact, it was actually really unlikely, because his father, Charles IX, wasn't king as well. The real monarch of Sweden was Gustav's cousin Sigismund III. And not only that, this guy was a real collector of crowns. Sigismund was also king of Poland, where he lived, as well as Grand Duke of Lithuania and Finland, and he envisioned to unite them all as one northern Catholic empire. Inconveniently for him, his uncle Charles, Gustav's father, was a convinced champion of the Protestants. Remember, it wasn't so long ago that Martin Luther initiated the split of the Christian Church, and in this time period shortly before the Thirty Years' War, all of Europe couldn't really decide which of the two sub-religions was the one for them. So in all this confusion lay great potential for conflict. Which is really sad when you think about it. After a few bloody conflicts, sketchy elections and legitimations, Charles became the king of Sweden in 1604, exiling his nephew Sigismund as an alien and a heretic. Only seven years later, in 1611, he died and left the throne to his oldest son, Gustav Adolf. If you paid close attention, you would have noticed that he was only 16 years old by then. Feels kind of bad that this guy ruled an entire country when he was way younger than I and I only have a YouTube account with 19 subscribers by now. Oh, enough of the whining, on with the story. As you might imagine, Sigismund was not happy that he was thrown out of Sweden, and so Gustavus inherited an ongoing war with Poland, along with the throne. His father wasn't the greatest diplomat of his time, and had left him not only with his angered cousin, but also with two ongoing wars with Denmark and Russia. But young Gustav showed great skill on the battlefield, as well as in politics, and so he managed to end all of these conflicts with a row of treaties and truths, until the year 1629, without any disadvantages for Sweden. Like his father, Gustav was a determined Protestant, and when the electorate of Brandenburg, nowadays a part of northern Germany, asked for his help to support the Protestant side in Central Europe, he promptly gathered an army of 4,000 men and set sail to Volgast in 1630. By this time, the Thirty Years' War had been laying its shroud over Europe for about 12 years, and as you probably already guessed, it wouldn't come to an end anytime soon. Just a quick refresher, in case anyone forgot, the Thirty Years' War was a conflict that tore Europe apart from 1618 to 1648, with the Catholic Holy Roman Empire, the Habsburg Monarchy, the Bavaria Electorate, and the Spanish Empire, on one side, and basically the Protestant rest of Europe on the other. 
The suffering of the people was great, and the song captured the desperation they were in, in the very beginning. I won't explain any more than this, because it's not really the topic of the video, but if you are interested in Sweden's involvement in this conflict, oh boy, do I have an album for you. As I mentioned, Gustav Adolf had gathered lots of warfare experience by this time, and even today he is viewed as one of the greatest military commanders of all time. After all, it was his cunning use of combined arms that earned him the title Lion from the North. This is not explicitly mentioned in the song, but there are multiple references that show how much the soldiers trusted their leader. This kind of trust was of course based on the faith in his perfected battle skills. So it was no wonder that soon after he arrived, he managed to claim the first and very important victory at the Battle of Breitenfeld in 1631. With support from France, he managed to defeat Count Tilly, who led the army of the Catholic League. While this battle is certainly one of the most famous and critical ones, of the whole Thirty Years' War. It is not what Storm Warrior is singing about, since it took place in September, not November, like the lyrics tells us. After this triumph, Gustavus Adolphus continued to roam around Europe, claiming more and more successes, and reinforcing the Protestant position of Central Europe. Now his goals became bigger. He planned a campaign to invade the Holy Roman Empire, starting with Bavaria. In 1632, he forced his opponents to retreat at the Battle of Rhein, which was another impressive victory. In all of these battles, he was reportedly not wearing any of the common plating armor, claiming that the Lord was the only armor he needed. While it is very likely that he still had some sort of protection, like a leather cuirass, Maybe his confident faith in God was a little ill-placed. Gustav Adolf had to learn this the hard way, however. Within the same year, he led his army to meet the Catholic commander Albrecht of Wallenstein in the highly crucial battle of Lützen. In the chaos of the fight, he was separated from his troops and took multiple shots in the torso as well as the skull. After the smoke of gunpowder and explosions had settled, the protestant army had won the battle, but lost their most inspiring leader. It is this battle of Lützen and the final charge of the Lion of the North that Storm Warrior's song is referencing, as the date of Gustav's death is the 6th of November 1632. Even though the protestant army carried away the victory that day, without its strategic and inspiring leader they soon found themselves on a retreat. You know, it was kinda like an Arcades EDH deck that turns from a bunch of heavy beaters into zero power walls once the commander is removed. Mm -hmm. And at this time, the war was not even half over. Still, Gustav Adolf had proven himself as one of the most skilled generals in the field and led Sweden from a rather unimportant northern kingdom to one of the most influential nations of Europe. That's why even today he is viewed as a symbol of Swedish pride. And we're almost done with this video. There is just one more thing we should clear up in order to fully understand the song. The line, on Streif he rode ahead. Streif was the name of the king's battle horse, a proud brown Oldenburger that he bought for a thousand palas more than 10 times as much as the average horse cost at this time. It was Streif that carried King Gustav into his death at Lützen, even though he fell from the horse before he was killed, and Streif only suffered a few minor wounds. The horse lived on for another year until it died and was preserved. Now it can be viewed as one of the world's oldest taxidermied horses in Stockholm. So if you are into Sweden's history, Storm Warrior or Dead Horses for some weird reason? Check it out the next time you visit Stockholm. So, thanks for listening. I hope you liked the video and learned something new. If so, please check out our other history and metal videos 
and consider subscribing to the Heavy Magic Crew. As we are still a very small channel, liking and sharing the video really helps us out and we are happy about any comments you might have. See you next time, and until then, stay true.